Welcome back to the channel everybody, this is Codations. In today's video, we're gonna be jumping back into some Cookie Run Kingdom and we're gonna be giving you guys five tips that every player needs to know and needs to be doing right now. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Diving right in, ladies and gentlemen. So I think for the very first tip here to mention, that's going to be absolutely crucial, especially with a lot of the new players diving into Cookie Run Kingdom for the very first time. And that's going to be taking a look at team composition and what is the bare bones fundamentals when it comes to building a team comp. All right. And so right off the bat, the first thing you need to know is going to be some of the staples that every team composition is going to need. And obviously the first one up is going to be some sort of healer. You're going to need a healer. Now, three really good options are going to be your Herb, your Pure Vanilla, and then also your brand new Parfait um, are going to be your three options for healers, in my opinion. I think these are going to be the best options. However, if you do not have any epics um, for healing, if that is the case, then obviously I would recommend using Custard. Custard still is a very, very vital option. I'm using them currently on my Code Mini account, and I've gotten all the way past Episode 7 and into Episode 8 still using just Custard. So again, really, really good option. But a healer obviously needs to be on your team comp. Pure Vanilla is going to be the top of the line for your healer. So obviously utilize him if you do have him. Next up that you need for a, any team composition to be successful. And that's going to be some type of front end unit. So the front end unit here um, that I'm going to recommend. Obviously is going to be Dark Chaco. Dark Chaco for any PvE content in the game is going to be huge. Because it applies a 20% defense break. That is AOE. It hits all the enemies in its path. It applies a 20% defense break to all of those enemies. Basically making them take a lot more damage from your attacks. Really, really good unit, but you definitely need a frontline unit. Now, as far as whatever cookies you have, you're going to have to just use whatever you've got. If that's going to be a milk, if that's going to be a Madeline, if that's going to be a knight cookie, an avocado, I mean, it really doesn't matter. If that's going to be a princess cookie, if that's going to be a strawberry crepe, I mean, whatever you currently have at your disposal is what you're just going to have to use. But this tip is just specifically talking about building a team composition. So the two things you absolutely need so far, you need a healer and you need some sort of frontline unit to soak up and, and tank damage so your other cookies aren't getting hit. And then last but not least, staple for an overall team in my opinion and that's going to be some sort of aoe damage dealer and now when it comes to aoe damage dealing um i mean there are some that excel more than others um one of the big ones in my opinion that's going to be huge obviously is going to be your sea fairy right like your sea fairy is going to be probably the holy grail but it is going to be a legendary and the banner is currently not here in the game right now um so Obviously, it's super rare to get her. If you get her, then obviously use her. Um, another really good option would be like a latte. Um, we've got a sorbet shark, again, is a very good option. Currently, right now, we've got mango. I mean, there's just a ton of AoE damage dealers. Um, at the end of the day, as long as you're sticking to a cookie that focuses mainly on damage, any AoE that you provide here on your team um, is going to help out no matter what. So Black Raisin, again, she's a very, very good option um, to run on your team comp. She does a mega ton of damage and she's versatile. She can go from PvE and PvP content doing a ton of damage. Now, once you have all three of those, the last two slots on any team composition, in my opinion, um, should be, you know, whatever you can fill in with damage dealers or, you know, cookies that provide a lot of additional support. In my opinion, I think your fourth cookie obviously should never, ever, ever be anything but other than Licorice because Licorice is a OP, ridiculously good cookie. Basically, if you don't know, Licorice summons minions. These minions do a bunch of different things. The minions basically do a lot of damage with, with their attacks. Um, not only that, they do they get a buff of 5% attack, they get a buff of 150% defense, and then they get a buff of 50% HP, and then they basically buff your entire party members for 20% defense for 7 seconds. So just an absolute crazy good cookie. Definitely get in here and build yourself a Licorice, even if you're not using it on your main composition right away because it's going to be a game changer for you, I promise you, at some point in the game, and you're gonna, and it's gonna be inevitable, you're gonna have to build them anyway. Next up we've got here is gonna be talking about the individual treasures. Um, naturally, I would recommend utilizing different treasures at different types of content, um, but we're not gonna cover that in too depth for today. What I wanna give you for this tip is the three main ones. Um, the big one is gonna be the common ghost horn. This is gonna give your cookies an additional defense buff. It's a common one, so it's very easy to max out and get more promotions on them to get some additional defense for all of your cookies, basically to allow you to live longer. Next one up, again, probably the second most important one in the game, and that's gonna be the squishy jelly watch. This one is going to be, you know, cool down 
down on all of your cookies by a certain percentage, and it's going to be huge because it's going to allow your cookies to use your skills more often, which then in essence is allowing them to do more damage and kill the enemies faster. Really, really good one here. Third and final one for the best overall is going to actually be an epic, but that's going to be the Old Pilgrim Scroll, and it's going to be directly giving your entire team additional attack, and it gives you a mega ton of attack, as you can see here. At the level 8 mark, for me personally, I'm almost up to 50% additional attack which is absolutely crazy but like I said ahead of time get in here read in on these treasures when you get these treasures a lot of these are going to be good and specifically niche for individual team compositions and specific content in the game so not they're not all better than other ones um some of them you'll never use I'm going to be honest with you but definitely get in here look at them but those three you cannot go wrong running those three already now jumping into tip number two that we've got here for you guys today and that's going to be talking about experience jellies and it's going to be talking Talking about specifically maxing out your cookie houses. I see this question asked a ton, especially by new players, and it's going to be codations. How do you get more experienced jellies, and what's the fastest way to do so when I can't level up my cookies and they're too low, you know, blah, 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 blah. At the end of the day, here's the best tip that I can give you, especially when it comes to experienced jellies, all right? So as you currently level up your overall castle, you are going to unlock additional buildings. In those additional buildings, you will unlock, as you can see here on my screen, additional cookie houses for you to build. If you don't know, cookie houses will generate a certain amount of experience over time. Not only that, you can see the number up at the top right hand side, how many houses you can currently hold at one time. You can see, I can hold up to 36, I'm only running 33, that's because I just leveled up to castle level 12. Now that I'm level 12, I'm going to buy these three individual houses and I'm going to start leveling them up. And if you don't know what I mean, once you officially place these houses down and because I hit level 12, I now have unlocked a higher level than level 9 on my overall houses. So obviously all of these need to be upgraded. But to give you guys an example here, I've already started upgrading some of my cookie houses. I've got these two here that are currently at level 10. I can no longer go another level because my my castle level has to be level 13, which again, I just hit 12. So it's going to be quite some time before we get here. But this is what I mean by leveling up your houses. As you can see here, they generate so many experience. You can see 328 of these experience jellies every seven hours and 35 minutes. So in essence, I can clear this once a day when I'm at my work or at my job for eight hours and then I can clear it a second time before I go to bed every night and that's going to give me a mega ton of experience jellies. Now officially diving in here to tip number three we've got for you guys today and that's going to be talking about the production buildings or at least the material buildings that I see a lot of players especially beginner players making this mistake and they basically load into the game they unlock a couple upgrades on an individual building in this case for example we're going to use the sugar quarry here um, for sugar cubes but I think a lot of players get in here and think that the items further down the list, so like upgrade level 2 and level 3 here are the best items to craft and make basically for your budget. And that's not the case actually. If you do the math and you do the math on the time and the return on investment or what you're going to get for that amount of time, it's actually faster and better to produce the items that are the quickest to make because if you especially if you're loaded into the game if you are loaded into the game and you are playing it whether you're grinding out arena grinding out story mode grinding out events whatever you're doing if you are actively playing the game making the item that takes the fastest amount of time to craft at the top especially when it comes to like resource buildings like your sugar cubes your logs your jellies all that sort of thing that's going to give you the most jellies or you know most resources in that short amount of time now however it's the opposite if you are offline and you know you're not going to play the game for five hours and you can't check or claim anything you don't want items just sitting there waiting to be claimed and not doing anything so 100 percent if you know that, then obviously run in and put in whatever the longest item is or whatever the item, you know, that you have that is close enough to when you know you're going to return back to the game. So then that way it's just actively making that item when you're not in the game playing, right? But if you are online, 100% make sure you are crafting the item that is at the very top of the list, especially when it comes to resources like your logs, your sugar cubes, and your jellies, because it's going to give you the most return on investment for your time. Now, officially diving into tip number four we've got for you guys today, and that's going to bring us to the guild system. Join a guild right now. As a new player in this game, I can tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, you are going to benefit significantly from the guild system. 
even if you are a new player, you might not be contributing a whole lot to the guild overall, like to the guild battle and everything, but if you can weasel your way into a guild, whether it's a high level guild or not, it does not matter. Just by them grinding out and people are playing every single week, you will get guaranteed crystals, and not only that, through the gotcha system in the guild, you can get a ton of additional experience, epic toppings, topping pieces, um, I mean, literally just a mega ton of really good resources outside of the guild gotcha system. So it's definitely something that I think every new player needs to do in the game as soon as they possibly can. As soon as you unlock guilds, you best be getting into a guild right away, reaping those benefits because those additional resources and not only that, those additional crystals will help you get additional summons to get additional cookies to then allow you to progress your account even further. Now, diving in here to tip number five in the final tip for today's video and that's going to bring us to the kingdom arena i see a ton of new players loading into the game always trying to build two different types of team compositions early game and that's a massive massive fail and mistake you do not want to be doing that your resources early game are going to be super scarce and you're going to be focusing in so heavy on your PVE team to cover as much story as you possibly can in the game um, that you're not just you're simply just not going to have enough experience um, jellies for one to even invest in an entire new team composition for the PVP aspect of the game. Instead, what I advise you to do get in here, use your exact same team comp that you are building, you know, and using in the PV, PVE aspect of the game, and then don't worry about grinding out the arena to anything crazy. What I advise you to do is just use your same team composition, jump in here, pick and choose your individual targets strategically. Get in here, look at your individual targets, Check out their overall max power. You can see this in the right-hand side here. You can also take a look at their full team composition at the lower ranks. And then you can also see the individual treasures that each one of them have or what they are currently running. So basically looking at this, can you can do a really good assessment to find out if your team composition can beat them. If your power level is super low or your treasures are way lower than theirs and they're equal power level to you, those are all indicators that you probably can't take on that team. So instead, I would advise you to skip over that team and utilize your free refresh as much as possible this right here is going to be your lifesaver whether you own the kingdom pass or not you still get a 30 minute timer basically for a free refresh so just make sure you're utilizing that to your advantage and still definitely get in here and grind out the arena as much as possible utilize your tickets because if you don't know there is a season reset at basically once a month that every player in the game based on your arena rank gets a large chunk of crystals so to give you guys an example here i'm currently sitting at diamond three which you think might be pretty good but it's definitely not the greatest because this i'm not even in the top 80 um in the overall ranks but look at this i mean i'm sitting here at diamond three i'm already going to get an additional eight thousand crystals once the official reset happens which is huge so definitely do not sleep on that so there you have it ladies and gentlemen that's going to be my five tips that every player especially beginner players need to know right now when diving into cookie run kingdom to really get you started on the right foot man from building a team composition to what content to focus on grinding and leveling up your individual cookie houses to get as much experience as possible to level up your cookies focusing in on joining a guild right away to take advantage of those additional resources and as always you guys let me know down below in the comments if you guys have any additional questions i would love to help you out or if you got any suggestions on guides or anything you need help with as well drop those down below please be sure to like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell so you get notification every time we drop a video and i also will invite you guys we've got a discord link provided down below you can see right here on screen actually i think i got it popped up here in the corner um as well click on that link join the discord we've got over 2,000 players in there that are always always looking to help out new and upcoming players with that being said as always i will see you guys on the next one